what what would you say in your temperament or character or demeanor as being a major driver for you in terms of you know the success that you've had so far with real food oh without a doubt my ability to suffer i mean like i have a very high i have a very high pain tolerance i challenge myself all the time to do hard things and i think that lends itself well to entrepreneurship Hi, welcome to another interesting episode of the High Builder Podcast, a podcast where I chat with entrepreneurs and uh, professionals to tease out some of the details of their careers uh, and how they've built their success uh, to figure out the people, the ideas, the processes, and the platforms that have driven that success. And today, I'm extremely excited to be talking with an entrepreneur who's been building uh, a business for the past 10 years. Uh, and I'm speaking of none other than Afi Williams, who is the founder and CEO of Real Food. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much for having me, Joe. Yeah. The, I typically started this off like a pressure cooker. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my first question to you then is, um, in, in, in your career so far, what is the most impactful thing that you feel you've done? Um, I think persisted I think that I would would say that you know that's probably been the most um, impactful thing I've done is that I'm staying the course and I think you know it's it's been a very long and difficult journey like you said 10 years Um, it's been um, one where the days are long and the years are short kind of thing so it, it does feel like a lot of time has has gone by but also feels very short in the history of what I'm trying to build but persisting and really staying the course I think has been something that just has got me here really I don't think if I had you know quit or I'd had you know you know if I'd gone any other way we'd be where we are today wow that's that, you know it's so interesting to me that I ask these questions and I get different answers mm-hmm. and it gets better every single time <laughs> um, so the idea to do all of this where did that come from <laughs> yeah, I always people always find the story very interesting, but basically the idea to start this business came from my first job. I was working um, in South Africa and uh, had a very comfortable, very exciting job working with entrepreneurs. Um, and I did that for four years for an organization called Endeavor South Africa. And um, I really admired entrepreneurs. I admired the risk they took and I admired the fact that the risk they took sort of created these outsized rewards, like they were not only doing well for themselves, but creating jobs you know, impacting their societies, etc. And I kept thinking, I want to work more with entrepreneurs. I want to work more with entrepreneurs. I want to do more around entrepreneurship. And uh, the real question, the real thing that was nagging at me was like this idea of job creation and youth unemployment. I kept thinking like, how could I best support entrepreneurs to um, create more jobs? And then the answer sort of eventually came to me that I should be the one you know, starting a business so I could create jobs on my own. And when I went down that rabbit hole, I literally Googled which sector creates the most jobs. <laughs> and uh, agribusiness came up. And at the time, you know, we had a minister of uh, minister of Africa in Nigeria was addition. I was in South Africa at the time, but following what was going on in Nigeria. And there was this whole push and narrative for, you know, making agri sexy and bringing youth back to agriculture. And that just sort of stuck with me. And I selected fruit processing. I just went down a rabbit hole and then decided uh, to quit my job. And, you know, I told my mom, mom, I'm moving back to Nigeria. She didn't think I was serious. And then I bought a ticket and I came back and started. And I've been working on it ever since. So one of the things is that I've worked on this business since literally the first day I moved back to Nigeria. Um, and I've not, I've not had any side hustle. I've not done anything else. And it's just been my focus and commitment for 10 years. You have the most... Um, I'll probably say structured entrance into entrepreneurship. Yeah, so it wasn't, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I always say this, that people are like, oh, you know, most people start with a, what problem are you trying to solve? And it's like unemployment, you know, it's really uh, abstract and kind of absurd, but that really has been my fat motivating factor and still is today, still is something I'm trying to, I'm trying to build, build, yeah. So um, one of the things that I was able to deduce from the answer that you just gave was that a lot of research went into this specific mm-hmm. endeavor. Uh, 
which then brings the question, what were the resources that, you know, kind of like helped you? Because I imagine that there was a big knowledge gap in terms mm-hmm. of what you were mm-hmm. trying to do. So what resources helped you get started in, in your journey? So, like I mentioned, living in South Africa, where the sector of dried fruit was, was a lot more um, established, I, I tried to glean as much as possible from how the, the you know, how the market was built, you know, over there, went to visit a couple of factories over there. I even bought products and came back to Nigeria to start sampling and selling from South Africa. So I used that. But when I got here, it was, uh, it was, there was, there was nothing to lean on. Um, there was just figuring things out one, you know, day at a time, talking to people. I got a lot of support from people. Um, I started looking at, you know, countries around West Africa to see what, you know, to, to see, if there was, if the industry was more developed over there, and I found like countries like Ghana had a little bit more advantage over us, and I started learning from there. But that lack of knowledge was a blessing and a curse in the sense that you know everybody thinks so. Oh, if you're the first to do something, you get a huge advantage, but really you don't. You you first have to make your market and introduce the product and hope people like it before you can actually even win. Um, but it really in you know inculcated the spirit of. It can do spirit because there was really nothing to lean on. There was no model um, to follow. So we created our own and I kept always, I guess I wasn't shackled by the idea that it could not be done because there was, there was nowhere where it had failed. So I always put it on myself to try and figure things out, to try and find out how things could be done. And it, it inspired a curiosity and learning and problem solving that I think is one of the, even the key, you know, pillars of our business today where you know, whenever there's a problem, we just never say, oh, it's the way it is. We are always saying that there is there another way it could be done. Could we learn in another way? Um, and I think that another thing that has really helped is just been my curiosity around. There was nowhere I would not go around the world to find an answer to something. And, and it pays off and it continues to pay off, for, pay off for us. So that's been, I would say, been my learning model. Um, and of course, having help and, and joining networks and just you know, trying to, 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 to glean from other people's experiences has also helped us along the way. That is, that, the ending of that question is a very nice segue into the next one, right? Mm-hmm. Which is, um, you can ask like entrepreneurs at different levels of their journey, what, one of the things that you'll mention is people. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so who are the people and partnerships that have helped you along the way to get to this point? Um, I would say the number one person is my husband, <laughs> for sure, um, uh, without a doubt. And my mother comes in a second, close, uh, second, a close second. Um, really, my husband is an entrepreneur himself, and so in the beginning, I learned a lot from him. And, and a lot of it was, I would even say, less around business strategy and more around like personal coaching, to be bold and to be audacious and to ask for things. Um, and then, obviously, even up to the point of, my, my lead investor right now was introduced to me by him. So he has been paramount in my in my in where I am today. I'm really grateful for that. Um and of course there's just been so many people who have helped along. I think there's this idea that people are guarded in Nigeria, but I, I think in general people want to help people they feel are serious and committed. And I always lead with that and I, I there's I can count very few times that people, even people I've never met before, don't know, have not been willing to render information. Um, to me, um, you know, I've been very lucky with um, investors. I've had great investors who have helped, you know, keep us going till today. Um, and also just just being, I think, open to feedback and being able to get feedback has also made that, you know, people be really helpful to me. But I mean, it takes a complete village to, to grow a business. So there's been a ton of people I can't remember. Even some of our suppliers have been wonderful to us, giving us like credit terms that would without which we would not be here um it's 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 innumerable but um i think you know getting that help comes from what you're what you're giving in the sense that do people really feel that you're doing something and meaningful and you're serious and you're committed and you're more likely to get help that way mm-hmm. that, that that is that is really powerful mm-hmm. um what what would you say in your temperament or character or demeanor as being a major driver for you in terms of you know the success that you've had so far with real food oh without a doubt my ability to suffer i mean like i have a very high i have a very high pain tolerance so um but in all seriousness it is that it is grit it's grittiness and um 
um, you know, just the ability to, to do what I say I'll do. I'm a very, um, I like doing hard things in my, in my personal pursuits. I'm a marathon runner. So, um, it, that kind of gives an insight into, I've run over 20 plus marathons. So I, uh, and I even run marathons while I'm pregnant. So I do, I challenge myself all the time to do hard things. And I think that lends itself well to entrepreneurship. Um, I, I, I play football, recreational, like touch American football. I, I, I definitely, and I'm, I'm something I picked up later in life. Um, so this idea of like just being, you know, being um, somebody with a, a little bit more than average grit, I think has been very helpful to me. And um, really somebody who is okay with doing things in the long term. So I know that entrepreneurship in Nigeria is extremely um, risky. They're, you know, given the macroeconomic um, conditions of the country, it's always boom and bust. We're always in up and down. There's always a period of like high oil prices, then low oil prices, and then everybody leaves and comes back. Um, but I don't know, there's just a level of persistence. I believe that I'm the kind of person who does a few things and sees them through to the end. Mm -hmm. So that's also really, really helped, um, really, really helped me. And I think the journey of entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship itself, like, it sharpens you so you learn to be more persistent even where you were not initially or where you know prob the problems that used to daunt me in the first second third year don't even i don't lose sleep over crazy. anymore um you know <laughs> the amount of money i used to think were big and like oh my god how would i pay this today like i'm not they don't bother me anymore so there is a even as you're going through the journey you're learning um but yeah sticking to it and, and i think i guess believing in the long term is something that has really you know, you know, really been impactful in my career. That's that's great. Mm -hmm. uh, what platforms or channels uh, could be an industry, could be a sector or technology? Mm -hmm. Do you think has given you the biggest opportunity to showcase your creative abilities and your entrepreneurial energy? What platforms? Yeah. Yeah. Um, huh. That's a that's a very interesting question. Um, I'll probably venture to say maybe it's the agricultural sector in Nigeria, but but I don't want to. Um, you know. I think yeah, that's a very good question. I think more for I think what has been I think what has allowed us to um, I think showcase ourselves more at, you know the most as a business has actually been I would say the novelty of the the business. So the fact that we were operating in a no, in a country that this did not exist before. Um, the impact of it, I think, has been a lot more, and we've gotten a lot, more, certainly a lot more recognition, and a lot more recognition for innovation, and a lot more recognition for um, our branding and things like that than we would elsewhere. Because elsewhere in the world, this is a very common product, and now, luckily, it's quite common in Nigeria. I'm really proud that that's something we did. We built an entire subsector of product that didn't exist before, but. In the early years and the support we got, it was wow. You know, how do you get? Why you? How? Why are people eating dried fruit? Like, you know, in fact, that's the feedback we used to get in the beginning. Why would I eat fresh dried pineapples when I can buy fresh on the road or mango? I prefer fresh mangoes and all these things. And even the idea that we've been able to change people's eating habits and get them used to a different type of snack, I think, gave us a lot of leverage because it just was not done and people didn't see that it could be possible. But now it's very commonplace. I think that the time we started, if I can, if that answers the question, gave us a, it was like opportune in the way that we got a lot more, you know, um, a lot more um, notoriety for doing something. Now the next company that does it behind us is not going to be as special because, you know, we've already sort of built, you know, built, built the market. But I would say that probably was the biggest, the biggest opportunity for us to really showcase ourselves as an innovative business and a new product yeah all right that that is even a better answer <laughs> um, so then um what 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 role and i know like you've been in a uh, multitude uh, maybe not a multitude but a couple of roles mm -hmm. before you found in real food so mm -hmm. out of all the positions that you've been or even the stages of this mm -hmm. current business that you've been um, which one do you think has given you the best opportunity to um, to show your best work? Because I know like a one-year-old business is very different yeah, from a 10-year-old business. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> uh, for me, I think I'm most excited by creating from scratch. And so I think 
if I'm being very, very honest, the like sort of um, early years were very exciting for me because it were, I had a lot more energy. I was younger, so <laughs> I had a lot more energy for sure. But I love the idea of creating and and um, building things from nothing. And now as a 10 year old business, I can't do that as much. So kind of like my job is, uh, my biggest strength is being able to, you know, to, to look at nothing and make it something. I'm not particularly as excited about taking it to like, my, I mean, my, my investors would probably not like to hear that, although <laughs> I don't mean I'm not committed to building a bigger business, but I love the idea of like starting from nothing. And now as a 10 year old business, my job is really, um, as a CEO is really around steadying the ship and making sure like a lot more people are moving in the same direction versus five years ago, it was about like, like figuring things out in real time and, you know, bringing new things to life. And that was really exciting for me. I am not, I'm not the kind of person daunted by having to start from zero. I don't mind. In fact, I, I thrive there. Um, but now we're not at level zero anymore. So my, my, my countenance has had to change. And uh, it's really frustrating. I think most entrepreneurs will say this yeah. when you're like in ten years old, you can't you can't wake up one day and just say let's change things. It doesn't happen like that. Uh, but definitely the early like the years three to five, six of the business where we were really innovating, and I mean we still are, but we were really really innovating and cracking codes and and trying to outsmart Nigeria and its problems <laughs> and you know all sorts. So it was very fun. It was a very fun time then. Yeah. Yeah, it's the analogy would probably be closer to um, transitioning from a foot soldier to a general. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, um, what would you say is the biggest challenge that you face to date, and how did you overcome it? Yeah, so I think I would say if I was to pick the biggest challenge we we faced was definitely around raising funding um, to grow the business, and I think that that came from a lot of different things. One, we had a new product, so we had to establish that this product was 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 worth investing in that the market actually wanted it so that took five to six years uh, on top of that you have nigeria and its impact on your business devaluations uh you know recessions and uh you know the market up and down that, that really slowed slowed us down and then covid slowed us down by another year so uh, that nine-year journey was really daunting and i think like for most businesses if they don't raise money at a particular point you know, especially a product business like ours, where you, you need working capital, you need, you know, there, there are a lot of constraints on cash, you won't grow. And so we've been very fortunate that we've been able to raise money. But, you know, how I overcome that was really a lot of different models. I started off trying to raise this big amount of money that nobody believed I could subsume and use. And then I started changing my strategy where I was like, okay, if I could just raise smaller amounts from individuals and small firms, um, to meet more realistic timelines and, and milestones, maybe that would help. And that started working. So instead of trying to raise like $3 million, I would go to an investor and individual and be like, give me a hundred thousand, I'll get to like a hundred more stores, you know? And, and I, I sort of changed my model to tweak what people were comfortable with investing in here. And that started working and getting us to the point where we ultimately then showed that we were growing and we're able to grow enough for, you know, PE funding, which is what we closed last year. But it was it was tough and it was long, a lot of disappointment. I talked to a lot of investors. I will never forget like my best ghosting story where after um, I was talking to um, somebody who said he would be interested in investing in my business and I was in New York running the New York Marathon. And the day after the New York Marathon, I'm like, mind you, my legs are not working. I'm exhausted and hobbling. I agree to meet this guy and I'm like, okay, we'll meet and we'll talk. And my husband was like, I think this person is not going to show up. And I was so mad at him. I was like, why, why are you, are you? Negative? I was like, you're negative. You don't believe in me. And then like 10 minutes to the end of the meeting, he's like, uh, sorry, I can't make it. And that was the end. And I was like, this is the worst like disappointment I've ever gotten. I, was, I mean, I was exhausted. I was in pain. And I like was like, I don't have to take this meeting. I'm, you know, I'm building my business. And the guy didn't show up. So yeah, I faced a lot of disappointment with fundraising. It's a, It was a long journey. It was a lot of no's, a ton of no's, a ton of no responses. Um, but you know, you just, just keep going and you just have to keep sticking with it. And, and I'm fortunate that I have a positive response right now. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, finally, 
what 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 is on the horizon for you for mm. over the next five to ten years, and what is your plan to achieve that? That's a great question. Um, really excited about what we can build. I think you know, in the last year since we've raised funding and we're right now we're expanding our factory. We've purchased an, an amazing factory in Abiyakuta, so that's where we're going to be moving our production to, and we're really going to be increasing our production capacity anywhere from six to ten times, depending on the product of what we currently produce. So that's really exciting. It creates a lot of challenges because we have to now do a lot more work around our value chain. So getting raw materials is the biggest challenge any manufacturing company or processing company has in Nigeria. Um, and that is going to be a challenge for sure. But it really creates an opportunity for us, I think, as a company to start. Uh, I think I'm starting to see our company more as an ecosystem builder, like somebody who is fixing the issues in the fruit value chain that, that the wider populace can benefit from. Um, we do, um, you know, we're working with farmers, we're training mango farmers and fruit farmers right now. Um, and we hope to do more of that work so that not only does the productivity of fruit increase in Nigeria, but, you know, more people can purchase quality fruit for their endeavors, right? We're processing at a scale that hopefully allows us to um, start serving new customer bases around Nigeria and the world. We're training youth in agri-processing, we're creating jobs. So I'm seeing um, a lot of growth in what we want to do. Increase the number of jobs we create, increase the number of products we bring to market, increase the number of farmers in our network. So there's just an all-round positive, you know, positive um, outcome for the ecosystem. And I think as we position ourselves to do that, we, we will attract the partners and the people who want to see our work, appreciate our work and want to support that work. And that for me is great because I think it still ties to my original vision, which was that if I'm an entrepreneur, I want to do well for myself, hopefully want to exit and make some money, but I also want to um, make sure that what I did impacted a lot more people and I see that being the case. So again, it also, it also speaks to us wanting to be the first and the largest. I mean, right now we are the largest, but really largest commercial food processor in Nigeria and doing something that 10 years ago no one would have thought could be possible. Uh, so if we achieve that, uh, I, I, I can leave a happy woman and I can say my job has been done. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it, you, you're definitely a trailblazer and I all I can do is just wish you more success. Thank you uh, very much. Journey. Thank um, you very much. Well, thank you so much for making the time out today to, to chat with me. I think this has been uh, extremely enjoyable for me and learning about your journey and some of the challenges. Um, and guys, that is the end of another uh, episode of the High Built In Podcast. Uh, if you enjoyed it, give it a like. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, follow me on all socials at Joan underscore IO. This has been an Afro Laser production, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.